my girlfriend wants to go and watch some TV, so... Okay, well, if she kicks us <laughs> off first, that's okay, so no worries there. Fantastic. Well, welcome to episode three of Conscious Talks. I'm really excited to be here with my friend, Mark Panelitis. Mark, can you please just introduce yourself a little bit for the audience? Sure. Um, so I, I live sort of in the area with, with Joe. Obviously, we're both from Ontario, Canada. Um, we, uh, I, I've been living in Canada my whole life, born and raised in, in Ottawa, in the capital. For those people who don't know, Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Um, otherwise, yeah, I've been living here in, in Barrie for the last what, 11, 11 years or so, um, working construction in, in construction and, uh, yeah, just generally, you know, just, just a regular guy, pretty much <laughs> a regular guy, he says, yeah. uh, who happens to be a very multi-talented in everything renovations <laughs> happens to be polyamorous. And I think I can call you a, a pretty decent sized geek uh, here and there. Oh, yes. If you'll take that title. Yeah. So uh, lots of culture going on for you. I, I do want to say briefly uh, the story of how we met because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, so we have a dear mutual friend, uh, Rick Dawson, and I had lived in Rick's house multiple times uh, in my life, like four or five different occasions. Mark Pandelitas has also had that same privilege of living at Rick's house four or five times. And we just happened to be at Rick's house at the same time at some point. And I was like, I've never met this guy. I'm going to introduce myself. And our other friend, Steve, was there. And he was just blown away. He's like, how have <laughs> you guys not met? You both lived at Rick's house four or five different times over the last few years. Like yeah. I'd leave, you moved in, you moved in. Like it was just, and Steve was just blown away. He's like, no idea how you guys haven't run into each other, how you haven't met. So I thought <laughs> that was such a cool story um, to point out for everybody. Yeah. It's, it's, it's also, it's also funny because the way that I met Rick was through another uh, mutual friend of ours, but I literally met Rick in a parking lot one time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember what we were doing. It was like, it was one of those things where, you know, Ren, right? Ren yeah. does a lot. It's one of those things where like he had to meet Rick for something. And like, I was with him and we were just like, yeah, I'm just going to meet this guy real quick. And then, you know, he introduced us or whatever. And then a couple of years later, I ended up, I ended up getting his number. And then a couple of years later, like you said, I needed a place to live. So I ended up you know, moving in with them and did the rest of history, right? Yeah, that's fantastic. I met Rick in a job interview. He was interviewing me, hired me on the spot. So can't wait to have Rick on the show as well. But moving past that for now, you had such a wonderful idea of topics to speak about. And I'm very excited for us to share those topics. On the top of your list was something I don't think we've ever actually discussed, which made it even more exciting for me because we've lived together. We've shared tons of time together, tons of culture, worked together even what made you want to talk about religion, Mr. Mark Pandelitas? <laughs> well, um, I don't know. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Obviously, you know, religion is one of those things that is pretty prominent um, in, in conversations, social media, on social media especially. Um, you know, and I unfortunately spend a little bit too much time probably on social media. Um, more, I, I try to... I try to not engage too much and I just kind of scroll mostly, but you know, every once in a while you see something where you kind of go, and you feel that you're compelled to, to say something or to write something. Right. So anyways, absolutely. Uh, it was more, it was more so just that, like I, I had a thought um, the other day and it made me think of you. And I was like, like you said, you and I don't think I've ever really spoken. We've like had, you know, exchanges but never really had a real conversation, a real deep conversation about it. And obviously, you know me, I don't believe in religion at all. You have a unique um, view. I know what your view is, or at least I know of your view. I don't necessarily know the depths of it, but you know, I know that you are more, far more believe, like you, you believe much more than I do. Um, so yeah, we, we always stand on two different sides of the, of the argument, right? Well, a conversation, if you prefer. Sure, uh, yeah. Is it fair to say uh, agnostic? Uh, that would be kind of where you would look uh, to define yourself? 
Um, I, I don't use any um, pre-made definitions, honestly. I, I don't, I just don't, there's no, there's no compelling arguments that uh, can make me understand why someone would truly deeply believe like I understand the surface level arguments and I understand even from a spiritual belief of like wanting to believe in something mm -hmm. but the want to believe in something isn't enough from to convince me uh, and one of the things that solidified that in my in my head a while back like I was going back probably at least 10 years was something that um the you know one of the smartest people i think that that lives on this planet at the moment neil degrasse tyson had said that i had heard a while back about 10 years ago um really solidified my stance and my belief and if you don't mind me saying what he said was as soon as you it's and I'm not quoting because it's not exact, but it's Air the friends. essence of, of what he said was if you assign your ignorance to God, then you lose your ability to to search for the truth. Mm. Right. And what that means is that when if you say, like, oh, I don't know what the answer is, so I'm gonna say, okay, well, it must be something I don't understand, then that that shuts off your curiosity. Because you've now resolved the question. The question was, uh, you know, I don't understand what what is this? What what causes this? What's created this? Why is this? Whatever the question is, mm -hmm. you've now assigned it to something that you are comfortable with, even though you can't you can't comprehend it. You've said, okay, I've, I've I've answered the question, so I don't need to keep asking anymore. And then you move on, right? You've mm -hmm. now moved on mentally and emotionally to other things. So. That can be useful in a sense, but the the reality is is that if you if you answer the question and the answer is wrong, right, or at least the answer doesn't actually answer the question, it just satisfies you, then you know you you've lost that curiosity. You've now not you're no longer asking that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I find it's a it's a very difficult uh, uh, conversation metaphysics um, related to. Uh, what is knowledge? What is proof of of a god or not a god? Uh, I'm sure you could probably acknowledge that nature has some intelligence. Is that fair to say? Um, it, intelligence in what sense? Well, like the stars know how to be stars, and plants know how to be plants, and and the evolution of species has allowed them to grow and reproduce and, and it maybe not even improve, but coexist. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll challenge that with saying, you know, I mean, the two examples, let's, let's say we just use the two examples that you give stars know how to be stars. Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a lack of um, communication ability, but I just, to me, is it, I'll answer. I'll I'll, um, I'll counter that in two ways. One, by asking a question: Is it that the stars know how to be stars, or is it just that the process by which a star becomes a star is inevitable? Right. Number one, and number two, is that is that intelligence? And is that actually intelligence? If a plant, that, you know, um, has the like the DNA structure to be its self is that considered intelligence i mean is it conscience is a conscience of of itself right I, I think it articulates some kind of purpose some kind of expression of being and so although the plant might not be able to solve mathematical equations it can exist and continue to exist and repopulate itself and so i feel like for me intelligent design is fairly prominent throughout the universe like everything i see that happened outside of human control had some kind of intelligence that r must have designed it i mean i don't have any specific reference to it right now um but i've heard ideas like what are the odds of you know life 
and someone might say one in a billion or something like all the perfect ingredients had to come together for us to have this conversation right now. Yeah. True. So, so it, there must have been some intelligence. And, and for me as a deeply spiritual person, I, I recognize that intelligence greater than myself. And so I say, wow, look at all the amazing things I can do and create and think, you know, what if I was another level? What if I was in a higher dimension and I had more control and that just leads me down a rabbit hole of just seeing more and more intelligence above me. Are you a fan of reincarnation? Um, sure. I mean, I, 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 I can appreciate the concept and I do think that it's a, it's an interesting concept and it's certainly attractive uh, for multiple different reasons. I think that the the reality is is that from what I understand, obviously, you know, I'm not a scientist, um, but I'm fairly versed. I'd like to think, at least, in in uh, mathematics and um, um, astrology and, and physics and things like that. So, you know, because I do watch a lot of I watch a lot of videos and I watch a lot of you know I, I listen to a lot of stuff on while I work and just you know all my time stuff like that. So. <clears throat> from what I understand, you know, from what we've, from what we were able to decipher from either the beginning of what we consider the universe um, to now, there's this, it, there seems to be um, all of the elements in the universe. And when I say elements, I mean specifically the elements in our periodic table that we've quote unquote you know discovered um, seem to all be from the same place, from the same source, right? And somehow the the configuration of the quarks and the fundamental particles or the fundamental 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 elements of the universe are rearranged in certain ways based on um I think it's like energy energy um usage or some some something like that right uh. and so all of the elements do essentially get remade when it's for example so what i'm trying to get at basically is you know as we've discussed before or at least as it's been noted before when a star explodes a star uh creates energy by uh, nuclear fusion and what that does is it basically takes the lighter elements and fuses them together to create the more dense elements and as that happens the core of the star becomes more dense to a point where you know it, it collapses under its own weight and all that kind of stuff and then when it explodes it, it releases all these elements back out into the universe essentially the mm -hmm. formation of a star, from what I understand, is this clumping up of of these um, like lighter elements in the elemental in the um, periodic table, and then nuclear fusion happens, and these these um, more dense and and heavier elements get created, and then this explodes and disperses that into the universe. So there's this natural recycling that happens um, because of stars, right, and and other bodies that are like that. Uh -huh. So in that sense, you know, because we're all human beings and, and everything on the planet and everything in the universe are part of, are essentially built out of the same elements, there is a, a recycling program in place, you know, for lack of a better term, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and to be honest, the, that recycling program that you're referring to is one of the biggest reasons I believe in reincarnation. And I believe that our consciousness feeds into greater consciousness. Yeah, yeah. Consciousness is is an interesting um, uh, what's the right word enigma, if you will, uh -huh. because we we see glimpses of consciousness in in other beings, but as far as the level of consciousness that exists in humans, it's unique to us. Um, 
it's one of the things that we're really searching for in the universe is to see if this if we really are um the only ones right yeah so, absolutely have you looked into the ancient history of this planet like have you looked into the stories of the lemurians and atlantis sure, yeah all so the time yeah for, sure. for me like uh, it's obvious to see that there's intelligence beyond modern day humans, even exposed on this planet. Like yeah. Gobeke Tempe, for example, the capacity to move 140 ton blocks or 240 ton blocks in a very unique mathematical way really suggests an intelligence greater than what we've achieved in modern day culture. Yeah. So I look at aliens there and like, I, it's just, for me, it's it seems likely that there'd be a pecking order of intelligence in this universe beyond human control. Yeah. And I, and I don't even disagree, you know, I don't even agree with people who say that there are no signs of, of, um, of alien life or anything like that on our planet, because apart from the, you know, I mean, there can be arguments made on both sides about whether or not any of the, you know, the ancient, what is it? Ancient, ancient alien stuff, you know, the stuff that they show. I mean, some of it's kind of like, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it is possible. They kind of take the stance of like, it is proof, even though it's conjecture at best. But um, the reality is, is that even with the most advanced technology that we can conceptualize, and this is going to be an interesting topic um, going, we can dive into a little bit later too, the most advanced technology that we can conceptualize, not that we can actually achieve, mm -hmm. but that we can actually just uh, fantasize about, would would not allow. You know, we we talk about you know, TV shows and, and like uh, sci-fi TV shows or whatever. We'll talk about um, wormholes where you can travel from one part of the galaxy or you know to another. It, it's not really. Even as, you know, that's not even really technically possible. I mean, there's no way to explain it. But, you know, let's say we could create a spaceship that could go 10% the speed of light. Well, even the speed of light itself, which is the fastest thing that we've seen other than um, in, information uh, shared between entangled particles. But outside of that, the fastest thing that we can quantify in the, in, in the universe is the speed of light. Even the speed of light takes thousands of years to get across from one side of the universe and we've also um th thought of that maybe the universe is actually expanding faster than light can travel which means that there are certain places in the universe that even light can't get to anymore from one mm -hmm. end to the other so the, the fact that we think that like if there have been aliens that travel to our planet you know, a hundred million years ago, right? Or even a hundred thousand years ago, they it's it takes time to get from one place to another. So it's like even if they visited us so long ago, you know, people say, Well, where are they now? They're probably traveling still, you know, like it's mm -hmm. not like they can just tell you know, they can't just teleport. I mean, we don't we don't understand that doesn't other than entangled particles, there's no instantaneous movement possible in the universe well we don't know what we don't know and that's the other thing right we so, could know one percent of the, all the knowledge that's available out there in the universe we don't we don't even know how much we know yeah so for me i love to contemplate and i love anecdotal ideas so like there's a million crazy websites online with so many crazy ideas that we can't possibly quantify all of them in one lifetime but no. uh, I've heard all kinds Although, of ideas. Quantum entanglement, though, as you continue to mention, seems like a wonderful uh, possibility for long distance space travel. Uh, wormholes, I can't comment on wormholes, but I have seen some people suggest that alien civilizations can use suns somehow to uh, travel as though they could maybe shift their dimensional polarity and not be affected by the heat and then just end up in the sun and somehow blast to the to another sun i'm not really sure but uh it's wonderful to contemplate is it not sure, sure yeah but yeah absolutely i listen i watched all kinds of videos like that about that kind of stuff almost daily um 
And, you know, there's one of the things that this is going to be a little bit off topic, but I, you know, we might as well just, I might as well just say it off the cuff. Let's there's, do it. there's, I think there's an arrogance in the scientific community about believing or at least um, refusing to deviate from what we believe we know. Because, you know, even though you can, you can, you can quantifiably say like, if I put, if I take two, you know, if I take, let's say I take these two pens here, I got two pink pens, I got two pens here and I got two pens here, right? So two plus two equals four. Okay. So that's, so we know that that's the math that we've, that we've come up with, but this is just a concept, right? And so, because it, we, what we've done is we've set parameters mm -hmm. around something that we want to quantify, right? Mm -hmm. These specific things, these particles that are arranged in this specific manner form this object, which is a pink pen, and I've got four of them. And if I take one and I set it aside and it's no longer, you know, in a relative vicinity to the other three, I now have three, right? It's like the mathematics that we've created or that we've, you know, created or discovered, however you really want to say it, it's, it's, it's it's got these parameters around it mm -hmm. so we don't even really it's it's they're really all they are they're just concepts that humans use to you know explain the world around us but it's not really a real representation of reality it's a like humanized it's that's why we you know when we, when we talk about things like you know, is it possible for dogs can, to do math? Well, not the math that we've created because we created it. Like we we conceptualized it, right? Like even if you talk about when you look into a particle and you look at its um, how its how its um, atoms and stuff are arranged, that's that's fine. But we've quantified those. Like they exist. There's no I, there's no there's no argument that they exist. But we've quantify we said like this one here is unique because it's got this whatever and it's got two um two electrons floating around with it so that one's special that one we're going to call it that and then the next one looks different because it's got three electrons so it's going to we're going to call it something else and then as we like fool around with those things we sort of discover these these reactions and stuff like that but all of the mathematical equations that we've come up with, you know, like they're all theoretical. You know what I mean? Like we can put them into practice because they affect their they are like they they manifest in reality. But a lot of the stuff that we're doing mathematical equations for for like in the universe, we can't actually test it because we we're not out there. We don't have the means for it. It's theoretical, right? Like. Huh. Like physics, a lot of physics is theoretical. It's not actually something that we can truly test. We can prove it in a mathematical equations, but they have to do so many backflips and and all these different like, oh, I gotta do like look at when you do an equation, right? Where you've got like both we like we've we set up these rules for equations where both sides, if you put a what's the equal. What's the what's the actual word for the for the equal? Uh, I think you're talking about algebra. Yeah, I'm talking about algebra. Yeah, but when you do like a mathematical equations where you've got an equal in the middle, yeah, both sides, the left and right, have to be equal, right? They have to balance out. Yeah, absolutely. And that's how you can create negative numbers because negative numbers don't actually exist. Mm -hmm. They're not real, right? They only exist in the sense that if you take this one and plus one it equals zero so mm -hmm. you conceptualize an entire um set of numbers that don't actually exist and then they can create all these fancy like crazy mathematical equations that do result in real results but mm -hmm. the math is not real like the numbers are not actually real right? yeah absolutely so i mean when we look at communicating with aliens we talk about math being the universal language. So in that way, I do think a rose, you know, by any other name still smells as sweet. I still think that if an alien walks into this room, we could probably figure out a way to say one is 
you know, whatever their version of one is and two is, you know, we could probably find some common ground somewhere in there. Yeah. If it's we're possible. relatable in conscious dynamics, uh, yeah. like the Milky Way, I think would have some kind of collaborative element there, but we're a carbon based life form. You know, I agree with you. If we go outside of the Milky Way and we go way to the far end somehow where the great attractor is or, or where light can't reach. Yeah. I can see what you're saying where the whole thing could be completely different. I, I can yeah. appreciate that for sure. Bringing it back though, you, we started this talking about religion and I, I'm not really sure. Like, are you trying to say like that, um, the world is, is magic. Like, I, I don't know where your destination was. I can appreciate the skepticism. No, yeah, yeah. there. Well, for me, the, there is, there's really two concepts, uh, when it comes to religion, there's the, the, the scripture, and then there's the, um, you know, there's the symbolism or, you know, the quote unquote, uh, reality of, of a creator, right? I understand. I understand. There's and then and then you know. So there's the there's two sides of of religion, and and I understand the wanting to believe, or like maybe even the need to believe in in either or or both realistically. Um, I can easily pick apart the scripture part of it because although I I concede that this the the messages, uh, you know, and the, the the values and the the moral lessons or whatever that are written in the scriptures are probably fine. So, you know, some of them are kind of messed up, but for the most part, it's good, solid values and like, you know, good lessons for people to learn. It's a good guide to life. That's there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I have a problem with is that it always relates back to, you know, the reason why you have to do this, or at least some of it, is is re is negative reinforcement right the mm -hmm. reason this the, the the subtext to the whole thing is that like you have to act this way otherwise you're going to go to hell this production is brought to you in part by mark what is uh, a few things that you've been doing that you want to tell people about uh so i started a uh, vending machine company a couple of years ago um so uh, it's called simcoe vending and distribution mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm pretty sure we have a Facebook page. I'm not 100% sure, but mm -hmm. if you uh, have any interest, um, obviously you can either get in hold of uh, Joe or get in, uh, get a hold of myself. Um, best thing to do is just to either call me or email me. Mr. Mark Panelis here will put a vending machine in your business on a variety of different terms, no cost to you up front, all kinds of flexible ideas there. So if you've ever thought, hey, this place could use a vending machine, Definitely get in touch. Mark would be happy to help you out. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Fantastic. And this episode is also brought to you in part, as always, by Joe Company Consulting, Movers and Shakers, Alina Haramko Photography, and Bella Photo Studio. So if you need anything from any of those wonderful brands, I'm always here for you. We're always here for you. Happy to help. So Mark, getting right back into it, we were talking about religion and you were talking about how uh, scripture really, you know, puts people in a box, if I can say it that way. Sure. And it really forces us into, you know, a heaven or hell kind of scenario. I'll let you continue that point before I get back to you on that. Sure. I mean, I, I feel like I've been probably monopolizing a lot of the airtime, but <laughs> um, it's okay. Yeah. The, you know, so that, that concept doesn't really sit well with me. Um I can understand the the benefit of it uh, in a sense because some people sort of need uh, some people do well with fear as a motivator, uh, you know, to each their own. Um, I, I don't think it's necessary. I think that the <clears throat> the more we move towards um, a, a more well educated society, the less we need to rely on fear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and I think that's the natural course that we've been seeing really in, in society over the last, what, let's say 75 years, maybe, uh, you know, that's give or take. I don't actually know when we started to move more towards a, a like a secular society versus a religious society, but you know, it was within the last 75 years, I imagine. Right? 
Yeah, I mean, as somebody that uh, gets the opportunity to speak about spirituality a lot, and and I try to, you know, stay in tune with the different directions people are going, I've been really impressed uh, by the religious ventures that I've been exposed to over the recent years, how much they've evolved since I was a child. Yeah. Like mentioning spirituality when I was a child was not happening very often. But now, even two, three years ago, a lot of churches are way more open to the term and they seem more open to other ideas as well to, you know, throw out some of those old ideas and, and move forward into a, a more progressive understanding of the contemporary cultures we're in. So well, yes, I think they have to, orthodox right? for sure. But yeah, I think they have to, I don't think they have a choice if they want to continue to survive. I mean, at the end mm-hmm. of the day, the organization's, behind uh any any uh religious venture whether it's a you know your local chapel or your local church or whatever they have to they they want to they necessarily want to survive because not surviving means to change so if they can change within the conflict like within the parameters that they've already set that's easier than throwing out their whole concept and starting from scratch right mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the internet is a huge provider of this. Like we can't stop the cultural evolution of individuals. And ultimately these religions need to appeal to those individuals. So they can't help but notice what's going on on Facebook, what's going on on TikTok and the news and et cetera, et cetera. So I I look forward to the future of religion, to be honest. I'm not a religious person myself, but well, okay, it's interesting that you say that um, because you, I guess we haven't really talked about your stance on it. I know that you're a spiritual per- person, and I don't think that's, you know, the spiritual aspect is necessarily tied to a religious aspect. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you, I, I've used, you've seen my view, so let's, you know, if you, if you want, you can obviously put your thoughts and, and uh, philosophies out there. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunities for sure. So for me, religion is really geared around uh, an organization, uh, a collective of people, and and some kind of finite ideas. Whereas spirituality, I find, is a lot more from the heart. It's a lot more of an individual process that allows you to connect with other individuals on their individual process. Mm -hmm. So as a spiritual person, I'm not going to say you know, Hinduism is wrong or Buddhism is wrong or the Baha faith or Christianity, they all bring something to the table uh, that allows them to act more ethically and and to have greater insight in their own journey and relationship to source God or whatever unknown we want to talk about. So I really like leaving the board as open as possible so that people can fit in where they want. Sure, but what of what? So, what do you? What's your actual uh, belief? Like, we're, we're I I believe in a god. I believe in a greater intelligence than myself. I believe that intelligence works together collectively. I believe in a collective consciousness. So, this well, what idea. But well, what that, does that mean? Give me the nitty gritty of what do you actually mean. Uh, so the idea is that there's only one consciousness in my idea. We all have access to that consciousness. We all interpenetrate with that consciousness. And my consciousness is interacting with your consciousness right now. But if we go up the ladder and we combine our two consciousness, we're creating a small collective of consciousness. And then as we look at Canada, Canada would have a collective consciousness. The world would have a collective consciousness. And it all sort sort of feeds together. And it has these links, these ties in a dimension a little bit beyond our comprehension. But then I would say that even extends further throughout the whole Milky Way and throughout the entire universe. There's some kind of network of ideas that just Mm -hmm. allow things to work together and have an awareness of each other and exposure to one another. So I I only believe in one one true consciousness. Okay. It sounds to me... Yeah, I mean, it sounds to me like you're describing a common interest and not a common consciousness because you have to determine, you have to define what you mean by consciousness because the way that you're explaining it doesn't actually give me um, a description 
of the word. You're saying we all have a consciousness. Well, yes, we all have a consciousness. But a collective consciousness, what does that actually mean? Awareness is a good word to put in there. Uh, but so it doesn't the ability mean the same, to identify that, and But that and means the same thing. You're not, you're not giving me a definition. You're just mm -hmm. using a different word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, definitions have always been tough for me, for sure. And I can admit to that. <laughs> sure, that's fair. But uh, if I really like tune in, what does consciousness mean? Consciousness is the capacity to exist. I think, therefore, I am. To, you know, uh, quote uh, Descartes. Uh, I'm not sure his name. But anyway, yeah. I think, therefore, I am was a famous idea that's been put forward. And that basically is consciousness. Uh, the ability to defy any kind of parameters to start making, you know, marks in the sand. <laughs> marks in the sand um that's what consciousness is for me uh, i'm sure there's better definitions out there but so what would you it, like to help me would you like to well, tell me what you think consciousness could be well, defined as well here let's do it this way instead what does it provide for you like what is it that you gain from um from your and I, this is a bit of a devil's advocate because i actually know what you gain but i want to hear what you say like i want to hear it from you mm -hmm. yeah you gain the independence the capacity to communicate feelings thoughts ideas emotions and to embody uh, for me god or consciousness or the one um nature we're embodying nature right now i think that's incredible absolutely like Definitely. to think that we're connected to a fish that got out of the water you know a billions of years ago and we're connected to the plants even before that and before that stardust we're just the universe experiencing itself yeah there's an argument to be made for that i've heard that before um there's actually an argument for the um for human beings uh purpose in life or purpose of existence actually because our our individual lives are somewhat uh, insignificant in in the grand scheme of things right i think the the interest of the universe or at least it, the one theory is that the interest of the universe is to create uh, a, a being or a set of beings that is able to do what it cannot do on its own right something that can where it can manifest it's something that george carlin said uh, familiar with george carlin vaguely yeah, the, the comedian, right? It's something that mm -hmm. he said one time was, you know, maybe the whole reason we're here was to make plastic because the, the planet couldn't do it on its own, right? <laughs> you know what's the cool thing about plastic? Plastic d is not influenced by ultraviolet rays. It's not influenced by electromagnetism. I yeah, just I want to mention that. Isn't that crazy? I know, it's interesting. It, I mean, it, we, is. We've, it is. We've created a lot of things and we're, we're on the cusp of creating things that the universe hasn't created or at least we don't we, we have never seen before right yeah we don't know we don't know <laughs> we don't know yeah well i mean I, i'm specifically talking about like ai and you know any of the new technology that's coming out these days i mean you think about how an intelligent an intelligent species can create um another um Another sort of like sub reality, if you will, it's not really the right term, but you know what I mean? Like the internet is this interesting thing that we've created where it exists within the confines of, uh, of you know, wires and, um, and some sort of uh, servers. Say, yeah, I don't want to say electromagnetic, but you know, there's, there, there's like a local field Mm -hmm. that it can like it, it can it can exist in because we can transmit uh data through uh satellites and stuff like that now so we can actually transmit data through thin, through the air um but it's like this it's basically like a sub reality right yeah um, it's it's pretty incredible what we've done there isn't that insane and then we're creating a an entity that will probably soon you know we don't know for sure but we we imagine that soon at some point it'll become self-aware um and and then it's like a whole new reality that lives within a reality it's pretty 
Yeah, absolutely. There's uh, some evidence to support the idea that the internet could form its own consciousness just to the algorithms that constantly are put in a position to evolve and expand their capacities. Yeah. But even, even if they don't, even if the internet doesn't have any opportunity there through the use of AI and through the work, I'm pretty sure Elon Musk is developing AI girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can have this super hot looking robot lady who's mm -hmm. has artificial intelligence I think that's absolutely incredible to think about. Like we literally could eliminate genders through what we're doing with AI. That's, yeah. that's pretty significant. Uh, so I don't think that we should take life too seriously. <laughs> I don't think we should at all because everyone's yeah. just playing. We're all just still children here as far as I'm oh, concerned. Yeah. And I mean, the reality, the reality is that we have a finite time here on the planet and we need to do uh, see what we can do with it. Mm -hmm. uh, another great, great man that I admire and that I've admired my, you know, for the majority of my, uh, what I would have discovered him in my early twenties. So yeah, for the better part of the last ten years. How old am I? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I'm starting to get up there. Uh, his name doesn't. Uh, Jim Rohn. That's it. Jim Rohn. Okay. With Jim Rohn at all? I'm not familiar. No, no, it's not ringing a bell right now. Have you ever heard the name Zig Ziglar? Maybe this yeah. sounds a little more familiar, but there he's a Jim Rohn is an apprentice of Zig Ziglar. They're uh, very famous in the network marketing industry, network marketing um, okay space. Nice. So Jim Rohn. Um, we can't hear you on those last two words. Sorry, I, I was going to say, I don't remember what I was going to say now. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to, uh, what he famously said in one of his talks that uh, he believed that the, the, the point of life was to see what you can do with it. And mm -hmm. what, what that means is that it, it doesn't actually matter what you do. It, it just matters that you do something. That's mm -hmm. because you have a life. And it's something that I've really come into understanding and I, I try to, it's one of the, de the unfortunate things that I do online is that I try to, I try to scream at people to get them to understand, but obviously it's, it doesn't accomplish anything, but um, it's kind of actually part of the reason why I'm doing this here with you is because, you know, I, I want people to really start to, as a society, we have to start to understand that it's the, the, it's a, it, there's no there's nothing that you are entitled to this whole idea of like oh i need to do this or i need to find a purpose in life the, the purpose of life is that you you are born for whatever reason i mean basically because your parents wanted you and so you so and so you're born like and then when you're born your only job as a living being is to continue to live for as long as possible i mean can't live forever you know we all know that but the your job the point is to live for as long as possible and to do that you have to do things like you have to live you have to work you have to you know you have to garner and and, and generate resources for yourself sustenance and things like that so you have to do that you have to do things mm -hmm. which is the point of life it doesn't have to be any deeper than that you just have to to do things and find things that make you happy and find things that help others and help and find things that that do good because i mean doing good is the only thing worth doing right <laughs> right i uh I, I love the human species because of the huge amount of diversity we have the potential to achieve like i personally would not uh consider changing genders especially with my understanding of reincarnation but i'm so happy that others have that opportunity to explore that you know for themselves i'm happy to you know kind of live that vicariously through them and then i'm thinking from god's perspective as well like how beautifully unique are we i have this idea that in heaven everything's perfect and so when the heavens let's just say are looking down at earth you know what they want to see they want to see people being imperfect because that's interesting to them. That's what the whole point of the sh this 
beautiful thing we call life is, is, you know, let's get something a little less perfect and a little bit more interesting. Sure. And is the human race not so beautifully colorful and interesting yeah. and not perfect? <laughs> yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason for perfection. You, you know, even the universe screws up every, one, every once in a while. So <laughs> um, that sounds like a whole subject on its yeah. own. Absolutely. <laughs> if the universe is talking to itself it's like you remember that one time we did that one thing yeah let's not do that one again <laughs> yeah i mean think about it right I, I you know i don't subscribe to the grand plan of the universe so i mean if there was intelligent life that that started up on a planet at one point and then there was an asteroid that crashed into that planet and eliminated that life it's kind of a pretty big mistake you know it's, i know it's not intentional but it's like that that was that could have not happened you know what i mean mm. like you're universe would have benefited probably right so mm -hmm. a lot of mistakes that yeah absolutely and uh it's it's incredible the miracles uh that we've seen uh on this planet obviously all anecdotal Perfect. we there's no one ready to go and prove miracles like readily so that's fine anecdotal miracles good enough for me I wondered, you know, we're talking about all these amazing things. I wondered, did you want to switch and maybe just speak a little bit about the evolution of human culture or male culture? Like, I, I'd imagine you'd have some opinions here. We have this idea in contemporary history that we were like fighting with swords 500 years ago and dying from the, you know, the Black Plague. What has happened? How did we get here? It's, it's definitely um, hard to say. We have, like you said, we really only have anecdotal evidence. Um, you know, we have some written accounts um, which are not reliable, really. So, yeah. I, I don't like to... I, I could say one thing clearly about the past. We don't actually know very much. We, we like to make conjecture, we like to make assumptions, and it's not necessarily wrong or bad or anything, but it's not productive. It actually doesn't accomplish anything. Um, so the reality is, is that we, we understand that we are a um, sexual species, which means we require male and female to uh, reproduce. And that's the only things. And this this may not rub some people the right way, but it's unfortunate um, that we've come to a point where we believe or we've created this belief where we can somehow change someone's gender or that somehow somebody is born in the wrong gender. It doesn't make any sense because from a religious perspective, that's blasphemy. From a non-religious perspective, it's not possible. So... There's really no angle there for people to 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 grab on. I don't know where this thing has come from, but well, you know, isn't it beautiful that they have the freedom to do that? And isn't it beautiful that it's interesting? You know, interesting is a subjective word. I think it's not productive, and I'm a very, you know, productive kind of person. So I just don't see the 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 value in it. Um, even the argument that it's possible is is kind of a what's the right word um, it's i don't remember what the terminology is but it's 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 only possible because of where we've gotten to in technology beforehand mm -hmm. it wasn't possible so i don't think like using that as, as a crutch basically it's like just because we we you know just because we can create nuclear bombs doesn't mean we should no but at the same should. time like <laughs> As I look around the room of the human species, I'm one of, you know, 5 billion people. I understand yeah. that there's no way I could ever ask everyone to not do something. No matter what you oh. fear, no matter what you don't like, in 5 billion people, they're going to do it anyway. So yeah. for me, I'm like, I'm we, blessing everybody. Whatever you want to do. Sure. But we have to be careful because that's the correct approach. And I don't have any problems with anybody making a decision for themselves. But see, we run into a problem where, you know, the correct approach that you've taken is to just be like, okay, yeah, if you want to do it, it's fine. I'm not going to tell you not to. But the people who do do it, what do they do? 
they tell other people that they should as well. And that's where I we run into that. a problem. I actually, I have not actually heard anyone say that, but I'm sure they must. I'm sure somebody does. Yeah. And, and has someone ever said that it. to you specifically? No, no, no. I'm just saying. That would be it, interesting. I want to hear yeah. that story. No. <laughs> Especially you as a super, you know, with your big <laughs> beard and stuff. Yeah. No, that probably won't ever happen. But um, yeah, I think, you know, the... We, and, that's, and we get into a whole religious aspect of it that too, in that sense that like people want to belong to something, right? They want to belong to something greater than themselves. They want to belong to a group. They want to belong. They want to just belong, especially, or feel like they belong. And so they have to propagate their views, to be able to spread that, so that they can have more people to talk to and more people to, to identify with and that kind of stuff. So it's uh it's similar to religion in that sense where it can propagate and it is propagating unfortunately and that's you know, mm-hmm. i mean again do whatever it is that you want but don't you know tell people that they should i mean it's fine to give people the option but you know the reality is is that just because we can change people's genders with with technology or with you know with the uh, surgeries and stuff that we've that we've invented mm-hmm. doesn't mean it's good for them doesn't mean it provides any health benefits yeah i i just caught up actually to what you're talking about you're not talking about an individual you're talking about like governments and and you know the world economic forum trying to push these narratives right is is that where you're coming oh, from? individuals as well yeah. oh, okay well All because right. you have to understand you know, when you say that the government is pushing it, the government is not actually a real thing, right? You know? <laughs> well, they think they are, so... No, 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 no. <laughs> what I mean is that the government is not a real thing. The government is people. Yeah, right? but it's a corporation as well. I understand, but a corporation is people. Yes. It's always people, right? Mm-hmm. At the core of everything, it's always people who are pushing things. Mm-hmm. If, if a corporation is pushing you to buy their product, it's the people that are pushing it, right? Corporation isn't actually a real thing. It's you know, it's the people behind it. It's always a person. It's always a group of people that are doing it, right? Yeah, and That's amazing a, how sometimes it's only a small quantity of people that sure, looks yeah. like a large quantity, but it's really sometimes just a small quantity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so maybe just switching, unless you want to continue on this subject, switching maybe a little bit more specifically to the male yeah. culture, to the geek culture. You know, 200 years ago, if we were two dudes, you know, just living our lives, we would probably be working, you know, a farm field or a mine or in the lumber industry, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Is it not quite incredible to you? Like we have all this DNA from hundreds of thousands of years that has this, you know, memory of itself. And somehow we just like came out of that for so long and and we just stumbled in and now we have technology we have electricity we have the light bulb internet i I just can't get over how quickly society has changed where this free time 100 years ago we'd be lucky to be playing cards and drinking and and now we have the opportunity to play you know dungeons and dragons and heroescape and Catan. Warhammer, like the list just goes on and on. And the the passion that we get from these things, it's replacing other things. Can you can you acknowledge for yourself how significant Warhammer is for your mind? Like how how ex- happy it makes you feel, how excited it makes you feel? Sure. Yeah, it, it taps into um <clears throat> My, it taps into my competitive side, which I've never really tapped into because I've never been uh, much into sports or anything like that. So um, it definitely taps into that and it taps into the artistic side that I, I I explored when I was younger, but I sort of lost that for a long time. Uh, I lost the interest and I, you know, I didn't really, I didn't have a channel or an avenue for it. So it never, it's never something that I developed, but I've actually found that I, I actually quite enjoy painting uh sometimes I kind of dread sitting there for hours but um you know when I get into the mood I'm like yeah like I go for it and so yeah I definitely it, it taps into a lot of things that um we would they're not the natural curiosities of human beings right like the the idea of wanting to tinker 
uh, and experiment with something. I mean, that's the reason why we have all these things is because no matter how far we stray from uh, sort of the natural uh, order of things, we will always have those uh, tendencies for those things, the curiosity, right? The, the wanting to try different things to the experimentation, the experimental um, like aspect of human beings is the reason why we're here is the reason why you and I are able to talk over the internet is because somebody went like, like what happens if I do this and do that? And then I, I don't even have a specific thing I, I want to really nail into. I, I just can't help but continuing to be fascinated um, by the things that I'm drawn to. Like I try to, when I meditate, I try to get outside of myself, look down at myself and be like, what's going on down there? And I yeah. notice the things I'm passionate about. Like when we play Euroscape, it's a strategy board game. It takes three, four hours. The amount of energy and interest that is created from that, it's yeah. just, it's huge. Sure. And it's like, why is that? If we look at our 144 hours in a week and your greatest amount of passion is in a fictional board game that doesn't actually matter at all. I think it really goes to show how foreign the place we are now is from the place that we were not long ago like we've totally left survival mode in the dust survival sure. modes not even on the table anymore yeah like it would have been night I mean, and day we were thinking about that in a sense uh you know obviously you and i enjoy a, a modicum amount of uh of convenience so that uh that takes your attend yeah takes your energy and your mental attention away from from needing to survive but there's still a lot of people that do like that are in survival mode it looks different mm -hmm. obviously um because you're not surviving to try to just find food in in the forest you're you're just you know you're just trying to like pay for the stuff that you need to pay for yeah it's um, an economic survival yeah but i mean it's always an economic survival whether it's finding whether it's foraging or whether it's um for a currency because all the currency is is just medium of exchange mm -hmm. right because if you could i mean I'm, I'm sure you guys are you and like rick and stuff like that you guys are starting to work on this where you're trying to buy like trying to generate your own stuff like generate your own food and generate your own power and that kind of things um because if you generate it yourself you're no longer trading your effort for the currency that then you can trade the currency for resources that you need yeah, absolutely. Uh, with my Loving Society project, I, I coined a term called micro debts, which allows me to exchange value with people, my clients, yeah. uh, friends, where there's no third party exchange. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I, I extract all the power from the exchange without losing anything to the banks. Every mm -hmm. time you give someone money, you're giving power to the banks. Absolutely. And for a time, that seemed like a great idea. But uh Inevitably, it looks like the capitalistic system was meant to fail in that all the power ends up on one side of the table. Well, yeah, it's, well, it's because of the greed, right? The greed let let uh, we allowed the greed to tip the scale. Um, mm -hmm. It's not that capitalism couldn't work; it's just that it it necessitated there were bad. There are bad actors, and they uh, tip the scale, right? It, it is actually possible to have a capitalist society that is balanced. Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll have you on again at some point. We can talk about economics as well, because that's yeah. a fantastic subject. And I, I'd be happy to talk about economics night and day. Uh, we have a, a five or so minutes left. I wondered, did you want to speak about your ideas around the polyamorous lifestyle or the polyamorous belief system, ethics? Yeah, I mean, we don't really have time to get into it within five minutes, so we'll have to relegate most of it to another conversation. But it basically boils down to the fact that, you know, the, the restrictions and the, the assumptions that we've created uh, around the idea of love is kind of a weird word to use, but uh, essentially the ideas of, of, of love are uh very very selfish 
in nature, or at least how we've uh, how we've um, perpetuated them as an idea in human culture. So I I took a step back from that a long time ago and said like it just don't relate. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense to me. I don't believe in in selfishness. So uh, what's the alternative? You know, the alternative to selfishness is um, is is selfless, right? And that's where polyamory comes into play. Is that it's like well, I don't believe that loving one person is even possible because we all love multiple people. Mm-hmm. in different uh like different degrees mm-hmm. but love is love right as you know you, you and i have talked about this before love is love yeah absolutely and i and i definitely acknowledge that uh, emotionally i find it's very common that people love many different people and i would agree that even uh, uh monolistic relationship monogamy um it is a little bit fear-based it is a little bit uh control-based it is you know, uh, a protected, reserved kind of system. I don't deny any of that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah we'll definitely get more into it another time when we have more, more, a little bit more time. Awesome. Well, that's something to look forward to for everybody in the future here. And, you know, yeah. anybody that wants to leave any comments for Mark, for me in general, these conversations can go forward, you know, on the internet, Mark wants to battle somebody on the internet. You heard it. So I can't mm-hmm. wait to see that in the comments, <laughs> like yeah. subscribe, share. And did you have any closing thoughts, Mr. Pandelitas for the world, for the internet? You know, um, everybody try to be better. I, I'm a big proponent of, of, of improving yourself constantly. And sometimes that means you have to admit that you were wrong. Uh, and that could be difficult so you know let's uh let's all try to be a little bit better next time and tomorrow and and then yeah we'll, we'll keep the conversation going and we'll we'll have another one of these talks and get on to more more topics awesome well this is fantastic thank you so much for being here with me today mark it's a great joy and privilege i hope you and Thanks. your family stay blessed i can't wait to see you again soon